Shenanigans, working stiffer than mannequins. Vader time like a mannequin. Mega powers, I'm savaging. Peep the babbling, got him shook off the verbal acumen. I'm the main event, meaning nobody coming after him. The topics we be tackling, ankle locking and tapping them. I hate seafood, but I might throw the Boston crab on him. Uh, you know sometimes it gets heated. Uh, you know sometimes it gets heated. What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to Heated Shenanigans Podcast. You got the trio here, the people's child, Mike, That's Chase, right. and Scott here, guys. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us. On today's episode, we are going to be discussing our top five matches throughout professional wrestling history that were missed opportunities, and we have not discussed these five before going on here, so these are going to be completely uh surprise spur of the moment reaction you guys are hearing it as we are hearing it so we're gonna see if we have any crossover give a virtual handshake to the guys that have the same ones and we'll talk about a little bit of about why we want to see those matches i'm pretty excited for this i think we'll have some crossover especially near the top i'm pretty sure i know everyone's one and two but you know three four and five i'm not so sure about but, but we'll see we'll find out i feel so like i going. got some wild picks I do too, though. I feel like my three, four, and five, I don't think anyone has. But we'll see. So we're starting with honorable mention, or are we saving those at the end? We'll, we'll save that for the end just in case it's on anyone's list. We don't want to jinx the list. Okay. So number five for me would be <laughs> Randy Orton versus Stone Cold Steve Austin. Wow. Did not see that coming. Did not. Didn't even process that as an option. Give me. I, I, tell me about it. I think that's something that they really could have done during Orton's Legend Killer run. Like, that would have been the name to hang the moniker on and the the build. However, that would have involved Austin putting over younger talent, so we didn't do that. I got to apologize to Troy, but yeah, he was Troy's not going to pick Troy's pissed already. <laughs> Troy's so <laughs> mad, five dude. Five minutes in, we're pissing off the, the Austin crew. But yeah, I don't, I don't see Austin doing it. <clears throat> Although, selling Stunner... Versus RKO sells itself. I got to be honest. Well, and, and the thing is, like, that would have been the biggest legend. No disrespect to The Undertaker. That would have been the biggest legend Orton would have faced during that run and uh, legend killer storyline he was running. Do we even count that he killed Undertaker if he couldn't do the job at Mania? Like, we even counted as a body? Like, yeah, you beat Taker, but not that fucking mania. But right? Taker has said multiple times that he wanted to put Randy over, and Vince told him no, that that wasn't the right move. So I think Taker at that point was more than willing to do business for a young oh. Randy Orton. Oh, yeah, but we live in the world of kayfabe, and he didn't get the job done. So that's all that That's matters. fair. Did Orton ever beat Undertaker one-on-one? -on -one? I believe so, right? Didn't his dad interfere once? And Well, the casket match, yeah. Did... I he beat, I, this is, sounds stupid, but did he beat Undertaker at Hell in a Cell? No. No. No? Okay. There there was a lot of Bob Wharton uh, hepatitis all over that ring. Oh, yeah, that one. Oh, my God. Mm. Ooh, tough. That tough. was Hepsi in a cell. <laughs> Hepsi Phil. So, uh... <laughs> Chase, who do you got coming in at number five? For... What's, what's your number five? Well, that's a great that's a great start to this video. Uh, my number five, just for sheer brutality factor, would be Mox versus Cactus Jack. Brother, do I got to show you my phone? I don't want to show you the rest of the list. It's literally my number five. I can't show it. It's literally my number five. That's hilarious. God damn it. And so this was... I, First of all, talk about it though. You take first it. of all, it would be amazing. It would just they would beat the absolute dog shit out of each other. It would be phenomenal. I toyed with like Cactus Jack and Bruiser Brody, or like they just putting it up at one point. Finding no, never. Mick Foley said he never got to wrestle Brody. Wow. Uh, and then I had toyed with putting Mox with somebody else, but I those two just felt like the most direct fit together for what Absolutely. we were trying to do here. Could you imagine that? 
Um, we we got Mox eventually in the WWE, but this was supposed to take place before the Shield debut. Uh, they did some promos and bits around it, kind of at signings and stuff like that and appearances. I think Moxley would have had a totally different career if this would have happened. Not that he doesn't have a solid career already wwe wise but i think we would have had to have saw a different version of mox that we never got to see that entire run except when he was getting needles in his ass for whatever fucking reason that was but so now here's the problem i have with when it was going to happen it was going to happen in like 2011 or 2012 and they were so pg at that point the match wouldn't have been fun to watch i don't personally i don't think because like i think they needed like if you put Mox in like FMW and just right. let them get at it, that's pew or CZW money. something like that. CZ Dub, I mean, just let Literally them get any in other there and just that allows yeah, blood. let them get in there and just have an absolute fucking Donny Brook and just beat the shit out of each other. Wow. You said Donnie Brooke. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's my number five. I don't really have anything else to add besides what I said. I think it would have changed the history of Mox's career. Um, you know, I think the other question mark would be who goes over? Is Cactus coming out of retirement just to win one? And then where does Mox go from there? Um, I think Mox would have to win in that situation. But yeah, I think it would have been a really fun match. And that's why it was my number five. Scott, number four. Let's see if this happens again with any of us. I'm excited. Number four for me is something that I feel like it was teased, but it was a one-sided tease and the other party didn't have any interest in doing it. And I think it was a shame because he went on to come out of retirement to do a really shitty Saudi Arabia match. Coming to number four for me would be AJ Styles versus Shawn Michaels. Fantastic pick. Not mm. on my list. Fantastic pick, though. I will give you that. There's a lot of Shawn Michaels options. That's why. But that's a great option. <laughs> But you, if you look at it, like, that was something that AJ had wanted to do. And at the table for three with him and Nash, like, they had talked about it. And Sean kind of got a little butthurt on who would have been the winner. And Nash yeah. was kind of the voice of reason, like, guys, it's it's not going to happen. So just, let's just talk about it. But I right. think but you, you can know, tell Nash wanted that match. Nash is a big fan of both of those guys, so. I'll be I'll be honest with you. I don't think Sean could have kept up with AJ in the ring. Here's the thing, right? If you go back to that dreadful match in Saudi Arabia, Sean was the highest work rate out of that match easily. Mm -hmm. Definitely better than Kane, but for sure better than the other two men in that <laughs> match. And um, I don't know. I think he could. I think he could have carried him just like he carried Flair in his retirement match. But it doesn't matter because. Sean only is taking the big bucks to come out of retirement, so unfortunately we didn't get that match. But man. so if we were taking the prime, the prime of these people and putting them against each other, what oh. prime AJ would like? What year AJ would go against what year Sean Michaels? I need would it be Killer Sean? Okay, free Jesus. <laughs> okay, so like ninety seven, ninety eight, free back injury. That's the Sean I want. AJ? I don't know. That's tough. I'd probably say New Japan AJ. I, I want Sean, with all the drugs he can possibly take in his body, to go against AJ Styles. Like, the, the, the period for AJ where he was doing the triple threat match with Joe and, and Christopher Daniels. Oh, yes. Great where you could argue AJ Styles was the greatest wrestler in the world at that period. And mm -hmm. that says that because Brian Danielson and, and Nigel McGuinness were still active. But if you got him at that point to, to meet, perfection. Absolutely. Nice. Great number Chase? four. Chase, let's see what you got on the <laughs> Number four on my list is a little tag team match. Okay, good. Um, I, I don't think have any tags. that. I think that this match would probably be, it would go down as the greatest, like, pure wrestling tag team match of all time. I got American Alpha, Chad Gable and Jason Jordan versus Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin. Ah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm making mac and cheese for that one, brother. I think, hear all of it. <laughs> I think that that match would be an absolute classic. Absolutely. 
Is Angle involved? Is it like Angle on the pole match? Whoever wins. Angle's gets... in a shark cage above the ring. Yeah, absolutely. Huh? On That's a pole. So He's in a shark cage on a pole. We're going to put a hat on a hat here. We're going to put a gimmick on a gimmick. <laughs> what do you do once you get him? You can't hold the cage. First of all, if he's on the top of the pole in the shark cage, how the fuck are you supposed to get him? You have to climb the pole and then shimmy up the shark cage. Shimmy, shimmy, not show him shimmy in to get his dad. Oh but no, my God. I mean, you could have Kurt as like the ref or something, but like, I don't think it needs a. It doesn't need gimmicks on it. Like, Mox and Cactus would need to be a gimmick of some sort. I don't think this match needs any kind of... I would say this match could <clears throat> arguably happen during their NXT run. Shelton and Haas, I think Haas might have been semi-retired at that point, but Shelton was still active. It's a match that could have happened in theory. Mm-hmm. So, a lot of people absolutely. wanted it, too. A lot of people wanted that dream match. And kudos for you for putting a tag team match on your list. I put none. I didn't even think about tag team matches. I have two more. <laughs> Wow, our list. Mm-hmm. I don't think our list is gonna have much more crossover. Then, are we ready for my number four? Yes, we are, sir. I'm talking the Beast Incarnate Brock Lesnar versus Y2J Chris Jericho. Now, fun fact: this was supposed to happen around the time that Kevin Owens had the Universal Championship. This was also around the time of that Randy Orton <laughs> and Chris Jericho backstage. Yeah. But the match did not take place because uh, Brock Lesnar did, of course, end up putting over Goldberg. But I think it was like payback 2017 it could happen. I would have loved to have seen it. We got some of those smaller guy matches with Brock, like the AJ one, the Daniel Bryan one. I think this would have been epic. I would have loved to heard those promos from Chris Jericho uh, and and uh, Paul Heyman. I think it could have been really good. It's, it's one of those that we look back, especially – Jericho doesn't need too many matches for his career, but this would have been one that would have been a really good fit because Jericho would have been the the ultimate underdog in this one. That match never happened. It didn't happen like early in Brock's career never. at the start. Never, not up, once. never. That's wild, bro. Exactly. Because they missed each other in that King of the Ring that they were in because RVD had beat Jericho to get to the finals of the King of the Ring, the one That's that true. Lesnar. And then all the time it was supposed to happen, unfortunately, WWE didn't look at Chris Jericho as a main eventer, um, as evidenced by the Kevin Owens and Jericho not even having the universal strap in their match. They just weren't viewed as top guys. But I think if they would have gave Jericho that shot, just for that, just for that, however long that would have took for him to get the belt and drop it to Brock, I think it would have been worth it. I think it would have been pretty great television and a great match. Um. Ready for number three, round three here? Yeah. Let, let's see it. So, so this would not have been a great wrestling match per se. However, it would have drawn a boatload of money and viewership. And the part that is so aggravating is there were so many chances to pull the trigger on this match. This one match could have saved the embarrassment that was the invasion that we got. And I'm saying at WrestleMania or one of the big four, if you would have done Eric Bischoff versus Vince McMahon, Ooh. one. Wow. That's not where I thought you were going with that. That's you amazing. Had, you had so many opportunities to pull the trigger on this match. Again, it wouldn't have been a wrestling masterpiece, but the oh. money and the promos that this would have done, especially if you threw this in the oh. invasion, Bischoff's appearance in the invasion would have probably changed a large amount of how it got viewed because Bischoff would have added credibility to WCW, right. something that they incredibly lacked at that time. But I feel Bischoff and McMahon should have had at least one major one-on-one encounter. I, I can't disagree with that. It's an awesome choice. I When you said Invasion Angle, that's not where I thought you were going. And yeah, I thought, yeah. Thought you were going some. Hey, I thought hey, you were hey, about hey, to hey, give hey, me hey, fucking hey. mega stars. Chill out. But, <laughs> but yeah, I think uh, yeah, I would have loved to seen that match. I still remember that promo where Bischoff gets dropped down on the bicycle, and uh, he he challenged Vince. It could have happened back then. It was the wild wild west in the, in the Attitude Era. So I would have loved to see it then or during the Invasion Angle. 
Bischoff had challenged Vince McMahon to actually leave to a fight at Uncensored. Oh, and, that's what I was referring to, yeah. And Vince did Vince didn't show up because he didn't hear about it. Vince had gone on record of saying had he known about that, that challenge, he would have shown up to fight Bischoff. Which Yeah, but isn't that just one of those things that Vince says because he fucking peacocks real if I would have heard about it, pal. Like he probably- I don't think so. I think he would have taken cameras with him and he would have fucking shot it with his own and aired it on his own TV too. So he would have been stealing WCW's pay per view just fucking put it I, on free tv put it on while free it's on t- pay-per-view the whole, yeah that's pretty smart that's pretty not hurting smart. nitro they'd been doing that for months before then i was gonna say it i was gonna say it. that's funny all right we ready for my number three number three 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 so this is another tag team match I got them back to back here don't gotta um, worry about anyone having it no one else has tag matches you got possibly one of the best heel teams of the modern era versus possibly the best babyface team of a previous era. Okay. I'm going FTR versus Ricky and Robert, the Rock and Roll Express. They've expressed wanting this match, so I can imagine how great it would have been. Damn. That's good. Yeah. Didn't they yeah. do that at like some random indie show? <sighs> I'm talking big draw money drum. Maybe they did. I don't care. I didn't see it. You didn't I wasn't have to there. Get so mad, Jesus! I just I think it happened. It we might have. Google it afterwards. Don't worry about it. It might have, but, but that's uh, a great match. Two out of three I don't know. falls. I just, give it to me. Yeah, I think it would have. The way that Ricky Morton was able to connect with the fans, and the way that FTR is able to execute a tag team match and be able to get heat mm. i really think that it could have drawn a lot of money five stars in the alamo dome brother i'll tell you that right now all right number like three it. big handsome what do you got um this one involves the most electrifying man of sports entertainment and mr wrestlemania himself Shawn michaels this is, I think this is the match we talked about that inspired this list. Uh, it's not quite number one for me because I, I think there's egos involved, which is why it didn't happen. So I don't I don't want another repeat of SummerSlam with Hulk and Sean and overselling. But man, this match could have drew big, big money. Um, the work rate of Sean. I think when you think about The Rock's career, an in-ring work rate, what's his best match? He doesn't have that match that sticks out as like, man, that was that was a clinic. And I think we would have got that out of this match. But unfortunately, in his Rocky Maivia days, uh, according to The Rock, he was bullied a little bit by Sean and the boys and decided, I don't want that match. Apparently, Sean has said he didn't want the match either, which is crazy because you're in the wrestling business. Why wouldn't you want to do business? Uh, but yeah, I would have loved to see that match on any any stage, preferably WrestleMania, but any stage. The Rock would have castrated Shawn Michaels on the mic. Oh, absolutely. Mm. But yeah. if if you have, I think it would have worked out perfectly with heel Shawn because that was the best Shawn on the mic, and mm-hmm. him just acting not bothered and doing all that goofy shit to The Rock to get under his skin. I think would have been perfect because you don't need the mic skills in that situation. You just got to piss off The Rock, and I think he could have done that. Maybe take the Samoan flag and put it in his nose. I don't know, but something work for Canada. Well, brother, if if we're if we're talking about number two, the the round. Or the round so, four. We've only had the one crossover, right? Before we go into round. Okay, got it. So right. if we're if we're talking about major mega money draws, I feel I have the, a feeling we're gonna have some crossover here. Go the, ahead. The biggest missed opportunity, arguably in professional wrestling, the two pillars of professional wrestling, Austin and Hogan. One that's, on that's one. That's my number. That's my number one. That's my number one. Wow. Okay. If What's you, your number one? It's probably my number two. We'll see. If you would have put them at WrestleMania, the the show that that Hulk Hogan made famous, and the company that Austin saved, but the prop, the egos never would have happened. It, we got a a tag match with them, a six man, but that is the closest they ever got to being in the ring with one another. The <laughs> money. 
that they could have drawn. Like, unquestionably, the biggest match in professional wrestling history would be. It would have easily done the biggest buy rate in wrestling, Ever. period. Ever. You can't, or maybe outside of like Cena Rock, like you can't. You can't do that. You, but that would have been in the Attitude Era as well. You can't duplicate the, that kind of star power. You know what I mean? Well, let's uh. do the, the pressing question here, guys. That match takes place between Austin and Hogan. Who should win? Austin. I know we make fun of Austin not putting other people over a lot, but it's Austin, undeniably to me. I what does Hogan to be... gain out of beating Austin? Now, if that match gets in the ring and it happens the same way that Rock Hogan did, where the crowd kind of turns on Rock and gets behind Hogan. That's not happening. I could see, I, obviously, but like if it did happen, I could see putting Hogan over in that situation. It would just you be the... Stone listen. Cold Steve Austin is going to get booed and go, oh, I'm putting you over, brother. No. <laughs> I was You're about to say it would probably be... Putting Hogan over in that situation would probably be as bad, if not worse, than the year before when Austin hugged McMahon. Because that was the shits. Do you think the crowd would have booed Hogan beating Austin? At that point, yes. I think I think it would have been out. such a unbelievable match to see. I don't know if people would have cared about the finish. at Like, the people. Not, I'm not talking the egos of Stone Cold and Hogan. I think the people would have been so excited. I don't think it would have mattered. <sighs> yes, that's it's tough. That's the reason it didn't happen. That's why we're sitting here talking about it is because they couldn't figure out who the fuck is winning either. There's one part in that match that I would have loved to have seen. Could you guys imagine? I want you to, to picture it. Sicily, 1979 here. They're in the ring, Hogan and Austin, about midway through the match, and, and Hogan's taking a bunch of punishment, and he's starting to hulk up, and he goes through the uh, the you thing to Ho or to Austin, and then Austin just Austin flips, him, flips off. him off. Oh my god, it would have been perfect. That would be fucking. That would be great. That's the tits. That's the tits. That's never, it. Never got it. Never gonna get it. All right. Are we ready for my number two? So that's not on your list at all. No. No, I tried you to didn't go. Didn't want to more... see that match. I did, but I tried to go a little more outside the box. I knew that one or both of you would have that match on your list, and I didn't want them to be totally the same. So I Fair tried to. Enough. I kind of tried to think Fair outside enough. the box. Um. So, my number two, I don't. I don't think it would be a clinic per se. I just would really like to see them suplex the shit out of each other. Uh, Bam Bam Bigelow and Brock Lesnar. This list, <laughs> this list is insane. Not in a bad way, but like, that's I. My mind didn't go there. That's amazing. Yeah, of course. Who wouldn't want to see that? Two of yeah. argu arguably the best big men in the business. Yeah, and y you know, for Bam Bam being that big, he could move. Brock is probably the best athlete to ever step foot in a WWE ring. Um. Imagine so, Bam Bam no selling a German suplex, getting up and doing a cartwheel. Yeah, I, I what like I would pop so much. Yeah, that'd be great. Ah, <laughs> uh, didn't get it. Yeah, didn't I mean, get it. I just I think it would be great just to see those two fucking hosses out there. I'm a I love a hoss match. You know, I love yeah. two big big meaty, meaty guys men. getting out there and just slapping me, dog. So I think that match would go hard. I really do. Absolutely. Chase, turn your camera back on. My camera is on. So on this end, it looks like, like you, you blacked out on it. Are you back? Am I back? Is he back? I think we're good. Okay. That's apropos, because my second match is a dark match between two of the darkest figures in wrestling history. I'm talking about the icon, Sting, versus the dead man, the Undertaker, my number two match. Is that on either of your lists? That was nope. my number one. I I knew it. I know we're going to have some crossover. Uh, we can both talk about it then. Um, I mean, it's almost like Austin Hogan, but like the two characters that just made the most sense to meet up and never did. Um, there's, there's the um, reports of Undertaker interview saying, 
I see why I don't see why anyone would be interested in this, which is insane to me because I'm sure he's been at signings before and been asked about that match a lot. Um, it sells itself. You don't have to do too much for the build is the great part. Some some pointing of bats, some lightning, some standing in the uh, in the rafters. Uh, it's just perfect. It's a shame we never got it. I don't know if it's it's if it's clearing up any buy rates, but it's going to clear up the buy rate in my heart. I'll tell you that. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's one of those matches that we thought was a layup to happen when Sting went to WWE. And I don't know if that was going to happen down the road before Sting had that tragic injury that derailed his career for a little bit. But Mark ain't showing up in AEW anytime soon, so we will yeah. never get that match. And <sighs> the wild part is, is if you give me um, Surfer Sting versus American Badass Taker, I'm still enjoying it. I still think that would be a banger. Heel Badass Taker versus Surfer Sting would even be a great match. Not as great as The Crow versus The Dead Man, but it would mm-hmm. still be awesome. I did have another one in the chamber in case Sting Taker got picked because I, I expected one of the two of you guys to snipe me to it. Um, did you have anything else that you wanted to add to your Sting Undertaker? No, I think everyone knows that match should have happened. Yeah, absolutely. Could you imagine it fast lane instead of Bray Wyatt in the casket, they open it and it's Sting in there to set up Sting and Taker? That would have fucking... Ugh. What and then he better? takes off his mask and it's still Sting under yeah. the Sting mask. <laughs> <laughs> I, All right, what's your what's your audible number one? Which I feel like is cheating, but it's fine. We'll let it happen. It's the first time I, we're I, doing this. I think you'll be you'll be perfectly okay with it. And this is another. Can I guess? Can I guess what it is? Yeah. Is it Eddie versus Shaw? No. Ah, it's on my no. honorable mentions. This match is another match that could have happened easily during the invasion, but we never got it. Could have done it after the invasion. And that is to decide who is the true people's, people's champion. champion. You son of a bitch. The you Rock, know the way to my heart. The Rock versus Diamond Dallas Page. Bang! Yeah. But they were too busy making him out to be a stalker and a uh, creep. Yeah. And killing his credibility that WCW built up for the last nine to ten years. So I just don't back. understand. I don't understand Vince's thought process on that. Like we like, oh, he's too cool, and we have two cool guys already with the Rock and Stone Cold. That's too many cool guys. Let's fucking take him down a thing. It makes no sense. I know he was at the time. If it wasn't his creation, which DDP had nothing to do with Vince at all, um, he wasn't pushing them. But DDP used People's Champion before the Rock did. I'd like to get that pointed out here on record. I would also like to point out this was doomed before it even happened because Dallas came over after the invasion that there was clear punishment mode for all of the WCW guys. They all went through it in different fat fashions. They all had to, to get punished because they opposed the almighty. Right. And it rock GDP is something a hundred percent we should have had. I think Booker was probably the only one that came out the best out of that, that had no attachments to Vince Pryor, who mm-hmm. still came out with a pretty decent career. Um, I mean, he still looked like a cornball sometimes, getting beat up in a... <laughs> uh, one of the most legendary segments of all time, but he did get his ass kicked in the fucking Payless Kroger. So, hey, uh, he was whooping Stone Cold's ass at one point, and he threw, him in the free- he threw him in the cooler, and then Stone Cold came out with the milk. Ironically enough, he got his heat in a cooler. That's it's wild. <laughs> but Chase, what's your number one? Let's see what so you got. So my number one is Shocker tag match. Why wouldn't it be? This match was supposed to happen, and then it didn't. And for what reason, I don't know. LOD versus the Dudleys. Oh. It was supposed to happen in 2003 when Kane and RVD worked with LOD, but something weird had happened to where the Dudleys were, like, on TV suspended, so they couldn't work with LOD. But let's, let's be fair. This, that's not the best version of LOD by a long shot. Anything no. from, like, 99 on was the worst version of LOD. Yeah, but I do, absolutely. Like, if you give me prime, prime LOD versus ECW Dudley boys, it yeah. could be. Take that match on a tour around the country, brother. Yeah, that match would fucking go crazy. 
question. One person has yeah. kicked out of the 3D. Has anybody ever kicked out of the Doomsday device? I mean, I technically know. not. I don't think from LOD, but technically yes, because everybody and their mom uses it now and it gets kicked out of. So, I mean, at the time, if you could have done it in like 97, 98 and build it as the two most devastating tag team finishers mm -hmm. going up against each other, yeah, that builds itself. I love it, man. We got a good top five. Not as Chase, you gotta lean into the obvious. If it's obvious, I mean, you don't I don't, to. I, I don't want to lean into the obvious because that's no fun. I feel Leaning like if in... we would have went top ten, we would have had more crossover. But I, I like keeping it to top five. Yeah, it was the top ten was too much. So let's 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 do a quick fire. We don't have to explain them. Let's go through and do a quick fire of our honorable mentions. Scott, what's up, man? What do you got? Uh, I just got one. And this is one that was incredibly close. And on a prior episode of this podcast, when Shane Douglas was on, he did go into detail about how this was supposed to take place, but at the 11th hour, it did not. And that would have been an ECW having Ric Flair versus Shane Douglas in a, uh, a, few, a series of matches, uh, best of three, actually, that would have saw Ric Flair and Shane Douglas look the heat between Ric Flair and, and Shane is, is well documented. It's legitimate heat. Uh, mm -hmm. We're still one sided now. Shane has got no ill will for Ric Flair. Uh, he said right. it in the podcast, and we've said it in private. He respects and, and thinks a lot of Ric Flair, but that's one match. Imagine Flair showing up in ACW. That's. The promos? Ugh. Ugh. Would have loved to have seen it. Would have loved to have seen it. Chase would have made the top ten. Would have made the top ten. So I got, I got one that I don't know. It's just kind of another curveball, I guess. But like, because I neither one of them would ever do the job. But it would Hornswoggle be like Hornswoggle and Rey Mysterio. <laughs> Hornswoggle and Kane, actually. No, <laughs> it would be uh, Dusty nope. and Hogan. Interesting. Biggest Interesting. baby face of the 70s versus the biggest baby face of the 90s. Let's fucking put them up against each other and see what 80s. the fuck. I mean, nobody's doing the job, so what does it matter? <laughs> yeah, I I think Dusty would lose there, but I think Dusty would be okay with it if it's in WB. Uh, if it's in NWA, it's Dusty going over all the way. You think Dusty's, Dusty's going to do the it. job at WrestleMania in front of fucking 100,000 people? There ain't no he way. He wore polka dots at WrestleMania. What are you talking about? He didn't have a choice. He, he was had going through hard times. His fucking bank account. He was hard gonna times. pay them bills no matter what. Hey, we can still get Cody fitted for the polka dots. There's still time. He God. wore polka dots. Oh yeah, on his Stardust gear. Huh? His Stardust attire. I'm All talking. Right, I gotta, oh, I gotta, you're talking like blonde hair. I know you're trying to ruin the his polka whole run, dots. Scott. We, it's, it's on record. I got a couple. Uh, I'm just gonna say them. I'm not gonna explain them. I just want to hear your guys' reaction to them. Uh, Jeff Hardy versus Seth Rollins. Never got it. Think heel Seth Rollins versus Jeff could have been very interesting. Uh, I brought it up before because I thought you were going to bring it up. Eddie versus Sean, a match that was supposed to take place, uh, but with due to the untimely passing of Eddie, we didn't get it at Mania. But man, probably would have been one of the best matches in Mania history easily. Um, and CM Punk versus Stone Cold is the is the other one. It almost made my top five. Uh, they teased it um, in that video game promo they did for one of the 2Ks, I believe it was. And we got that heated promo with JR in between them. Would have been so good. Didn't get it because he wasn't Kevin Owens. So we had to wait a few years. But I think that match would have been awesome. I think that was a pretty good top five. And I like the fact that we didn't really have a lot of crossover. Like, there were a couple obvious ones, but we got to uh, keep doing it. I think. I think let's keep giving them top fives and see what I, I like. I like coming in here not knowing what you guys are going to say. Chase clearly, I got. I'm never going to be ready for. It. I was not ready. the The Bam Bam Lesnar one, I think, was probably my favorite. Incredible! I would love to see the build up <laughs> for that. Well, Mike, as we uh, we're here at the end of the episode, it's about that time. It's about that time. Fader time. So we got to. Push repackage fire. Uh, this one's interesting. Uh, I thought of it earlier. Tazawa, Cruz, and Cedric Alexander. Push repackage fire. Man, it's not so easy. Fire Cedric. 
repackage Apollo Crews, push Akira Tozawa. As the weird ninja guy. No, he wouldn't have a ninja gimmick. Isn't that what he's doing now? Oh, no, he's with, uh, what's their name? He's with Gable. (laughs) (laughs) As the guy in the outfit. All right, fair enough. Um, Chase, what do you say? So, Apollo's been repackaged so many times, so I'm just going to keep him what he's doing. I'm going to push him, let him get up higher in the mid card. What does Not, Apollo even do? I don't. How can you push him? I don't even know his gimmick right now. That's all. He was supposed to be a free agent, and then I think he's had like one get, match. Get him back on TV. Get him some wins. Get him in there with okay. Gunther or whatever. I don't know. Uh, I am going to repackage Cedric. I don't know what I'm going to do with him, but I'm going to do something with him because I love some Cedric Alexander. And right. I got to fire Tozawa. Wow. Tozawa's funny. Like, he's entertaining, yes. but like... Against Cedric and Apollo, I don't really... He's a great worker. Do you not remember the Cruiserweight Classic? He's a really good worker if they would let him do fun yeah, stuff. Yeah, he's fantastic, but they don't let him do if, the good stuff. If they the, let the him do other things other than race, race his fucking gimmicks... Um, and run around for the 24-7 title. I'm, I'm, I'm pushing Cedric. I'm firing Apollo. Mm. And I'm repackaging Tozawa. I would make him like a mini Nakamura. I would just have him travel around with Nakamura, dress like Nakamura. <laughs> so he just would have be like matches, but always lose. I think it'd be great. So he would he would be to Nakamura what Petey Williams was to Scott Steiner. Absolutely. <laughs> or Damian Sandow in the Miz. P- take your pick, but I think it would get over really well. I like it. Uh, I like yeah. it. And then, like at towards every finish of the match, he looks out to Shinsuke like, "Do you love me yet?" And that's when he gets nailed and loses the match. So, since Shinsuke is the king of strong style, would Tozawa be the prince of strong style? Yeah. Yes. The prince of soft style. The prince of soft <laughs> style. <laughs> the prince of half mass, as you may. All right. I'm into it. <laughs> well, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of Heated Shaking Podcast before we change the rating of the show. So, <laughs> yeah. for... Uh, for Mike, Chase, and myself, guys, thank you so much. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the episode. We got more comments. So everybody out there, stay heated, and we will see you on the next episode. Keep it heated.